Okay, we're gonna get some started. We're getting set up. And I would, I would start, you're invited to come join us on the 12th of March in Kensington Close. We're gonna give a full day, full lecture. And it's a course that I deliver, it's already my fourth time, fourth time or fifth time in London. It's a full course. We're gonna start about risk management. Uh, that's the most important part for me, actually. I studied mathematical physics in Germany and economics as well. And our approach to trading is very numerical. It's very different to what you heard before. I'm not gonna talk very much about it, only on one of the myths. I reduced this lecture, it's a lecture already delivered in other languages, to six myths. And one of them is gonna be the myth of uh, over-optimization. That's gonna be the only one that's a bit more numerical. I'm gonna just talk in general about what traders believe is happening really in the market and it's not, okay? So that's gonna be the lecture about. So if you want to join us, you have the card there, you just scan it and you, you come for free on the 12th of March. And let's get started. So let me tell you a little bit about ourselves. We, uh, we are algo traders. We trade with EAs, but we don't trade in the usual way that people believe uh, EAs work, uh, which is buy any EA, in any commercial EA, put it in the account, blow the account, buy the next EA, blow the next account. That doesn't work. We get any commercial EA or any self-done EA or any free quote in the web or whatever, and we analyze it very much in detail. As a matter of fact, we call, each other, we call ourselves trading system analysts, okay? So the approach is really very, very different, and I invite you to know more about it. Majority of traders start down here. I call this the trader's pyramid. They start down here. They start with fundamental analysis, only very few of them or technical analysis. They stay two, and three, two to three years there, and 95% of the traders are losers. We'll be talking about this. And we invite you to start over here. S start knowing about trading systems. What's the difference between a scalp and a trend system? Numerically, what makes the breakout work? What is range trading? So you analyze the trading system families and you really understand the differences, both in coding, meaning the rules, and in tweaking, meaning the optimization. So if you have been trading for a while and you're getting the same results, then uh, it might be you need to change completely your approach to trading, okay? So this is our invitation. So I've been lecturing in several countries. Last lecture was in Hong Kong, end of January. I had a small lecture in a, in a restaurant, which was very interesting for me to know the Chinese market. Although Hong Kong is a strange plant between the UK and China. In my view, <laughs> it's not British and it's not Chinese. It's kind of awkward. But it was very interesting to see and to see the traders have the same approach to trading. So there have been over 3,000 people or 5,000 people to my lectures so far. And I see no matter which country, no matter which nationality, no matter which style, whether it's manual or automated, people do the same mistakes. So I developed this lecture based on this experience and I call it the myths of trading. And I've reduced it a little bit. I just talked Oxford, took Oxford yesterday when I was doing the slides, and I like to define things precisely. So Oxford uh, says, a widely, so a widely held but false belief or idea, that's a myth, or an exaggerated or idealized conception of a person or thing, that's a myth, okay? So let's see what kind of myths we have in the head we, when we are approaching trading. First myth, it's easy to live from trading. You've heard that, right? Just set and forget, just trade five minutes every morning, put your strategy, put your stop loss, and you become a millionaire. I've heard it one million times. Okay, it's, it's an untruth, blatantly. So uh, I just took it's a bit of an old statistics. I went to Parks Magnates, which is the professional website, and I just checked, and only in, I, w I won't name this broker, but only in one broker there were 30% of winners. They make statistics in the American regulator. You need to get the stats on what your traders are doing and how they're doing, okay? 
but these are only tri-monthly stats. So we have only a study of every three months. And in this study, it looked very grim. It was a 20% of winners against an 80% of losers. That's the official statistic. Because we hear a lot about 90%, 80%, 95%, but that's the official statistic. But the problem is that's only a three-month statistic. What about if I do, it's called a panel study. What about these winners of these three months? Are, all, are they also winners in the next three months? This we don't know. I believe it's much less, okay? So this is the only study we have. That's the cold fact, and that's tough, right? And it's, there's another very interesting correlation in this, uh, which is down here, which is that the bigger the account, the, the more chances we have to be a winning trader. They studied in, in this, in this uh, I think it was the NTFC, the regulator, if I don't remember wrongly, and they found out that the traders that have 50 grand or bigger are a higher percentage of winners, maybe because they do real risk management. <laughs> and the other guys that have 10 grand or below, they don't care. That's my view on it. But that's the stat. Then uh, I went to another study, which a friend of mine did. I don't have the study here. I can find it out for you. And he studied all the CTAs in the States. These are the certified traders, registered traders, that trade for other people. What in London is an asset manager, right? That's in America, CTA. He studied them, and he found out that over five years, 70% of the CTAs will have closed. Over five years, okay? And 70% of the CTAs are unprofitable. That means professional traders regulated to manage assets from other people, 70% are losers. Do you follow? Okay, so, and people say trading is easy. <laughs> it doesn't correlate, right? So I would say that if you really want to live from trading, you need five things at least. You need a method that gives you a recurrent edge. If you have an edge for a month, for, for even for a year, it's not enough to live from trading. You need to have a way to gain an edge every time. And it's getting worse and worse because we have now high frequency trading and all kinds of algos, and it's getting tougher and tougher. Okay, that's the first thing you need. Second thing you need, you need winning trading systems that are combined. Many people just trade one style. They become the experts on trend trading. I only listen to lectures about trend trading. The second February is breakouts because they're very easy to be explained. It's much more difficult to trade scalping and it's even much more difficult to, tra to trade on ranges, right? But that's the thing. If everybody is doing trend trading, what happens in 2012? No earnings, at least in the Forex market. There were no trends, hardly. So the thing is you need to combine different trading styles into the same account to be a winning trader over the long run, right? Third thing, you need a method that allows you to recognize good systems, to combine them, to start them, to stop them, there is never a system that lasts forever. That's a blatant lie. There's no holy grail. Okay? Fourth thing, you need a lot of capital. You need a lot of capital because you're going to earn little percentages. I'm going to talk about another myth later that has to do with this. And a lot of capital is a lot of capital. Okay? We're talking at least six figures. Okay? And the other thing is you need to be earning nine months because if you are living from trading, you need to pay yourself a salary monthly. I don't believe a trader that doesn't pay himself a salary. So you need to be earning nine out of 12 months. That's my view on living from trading. So that myth is busted. Okay, it's not easy. Second myth, brokers always steal on clients. Did we hear that? All the time. It's the broker. The brokers told me. Okay, yes, yes. There's a lot of things out there. Yes, there are. I put the names here. There is technology. It exists. It has been used, and the regulator has really put big fines on those brokers. I don't name names here, but it has happened in the millions. There is a technology. There is, but it's less and less used. It, it happens. There's all kinds of things. There's stop loss hunting, spread widening, additional slippage that happens suddenly, delayed execution, you name it. But, and this is the interesting part, there is even the whole thing that they can take the counterpart. But the, the point is you are a losing trader. They don't need to do anything with you because you're losing anyway. 
Do you follow? This is the main thing. When you speak with traders, they say, oh yeah, they hunted my stop loss. Yeah, exactly. On, one, on your one grand account, they went for your 20 pounds. Do you believe this? Do you think they have the time for that? Let's get serious. Yes, the technology exists. I'm naming it here, right? But it doesn't mean they do it on you precisely. Okay, and the other thing is that all these tricks don't need to be done in case the broker would make the counterpart because you're a loser. They only let, need to let you trade. You will do the rest on your own. Okay, so the first thing, this discourse about the broker stealing starts only when you are a winning trader. I've been in over 50 brokers live and only two brokers have, st have stolen me. I don't say the names. And both of them were not regulated neither in London neither in Australia, neither in Germany or Switzerland. So the first thing you need to find a good regulator. Why? Because if they steal, I didn't say it doesn't happen, it may happen, you can denounce them. You can record your screen. You can ask for the money back, okay? But I don't believe they want your 20 pounds, okay? They have other things to do. The main thing, you need to be a profitable trader first. Okay, otherwise you steal yourself. So the problem is people blame the broker for their own faults, constantly. They don't want to see what they did wrong. They do, excuse me, very bad. I was gonna say a <laughs> kind of curse because we're recording this. Okay, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter really if you're such a bad trader and you don't do good risk management. The discourse about stealing has no, no, funda no, no, no fundament, right? It's not necessary because you're the loser. Okay, that's another one which I love. You heard about the compound interest myth, right? It's all over the place. 10 grand at 5% per month, make you a millionaire in seven years. Great. Do you know in seven years how many crises can happen? It's called the Black Swan. You should read it. Nassim Taleb, the Black Swan, Amazon. Okay. A black swan is a negative event that happens more frequently than we believe. Like 1929, like 2008, these are black swans, right? Don't you think something is coming? I see black clouds in the sky. Maybe I'm the only one seeing them. Okay, so the thing is, how come in seven years no black swan is gonna hit you? Because if you are trading this, this way to become the millionaire, I tell you, I've seen many accounts. I've seen only once, only once, in my eight years in training, I wouldn't name the broker. The broker called me in to the office. The CEO of this broker said, Pablo, I need you to find out how this trader works. It was an Ukrainian. I saw the account, 10 grand into 870,000 euros, withdrawn. And he wanted to understand what it was. It's the only one I've seen. If this compound interest is so popular, it's so famous, how come we don't see these accounts audited? They don't exist. They don't exist because it's like a white blackbird. What is a white blackbird? It's the opposite of a black swan. A white blackbird is a white blackbird, which means it's, it, it's, it's statistical language, it's lingo, okay, for, for ones, uh, the, the ones that study mathematics and stuff. A blackbird is uh, something, a white blackbird is something which is extremely unusual in the positive side. Of course there's this, uh, whatever, uh, Larry Williams, and uh, he won the competition and his daughter won the competition. But that's one out of one million. Are you gonna base your trading on this unique white blackbird event? Are you basing yourself statistically? You're gonna be like Larry Williams? Great, go for it. It makes no sense. It, make no, it makes no sense to become a millionaire with 10 grand. It's statistically almost impossible. Okay, next myth. Why? Because you're risking the whole account, it says here. You're risking the whole account every time. You're lucky, well, great. 10 grand, 20 grand. 20 grand, 40 grand, martingale. 40 grand, 80 grand. 80 grand, 160 grand, up to a million. There's so many chances in between, it's gonna hit you fully. You're gonna lose everything. So many chances. Just do this in August, exactly when China crashes, or whatever, or, or do it in gold the other direction, or something, and you're dead, okay? It's very, very, very tough to trade with this mentality. 
I don't say uh, that uh, you cannot do it or it doesn't exist. I say that statistically it's almost impossible to become a millionaire with a 10 grand account. That's just the data. Do whatever you want with it. Get real. Okay? That's another one that to me as a mathematician really, really bothers me. People take models from the casino, right? And they say, oh, trading is like the casino. Well, it's not. Okay, it's not, <laughs> absolutely not. Because, you know what? Is there an edge in the casino? Is there an edge on the roulette? Is there or not? There is not an edge. There's an edge only for the casino. There's 36 numbers, serious for the casino. You have 2.7% chance of losing your whole account in the casino. One out of 37, you're certain you're gonna lose, right? When the zero comes. There is an edge for the casino, not for you. So, it's completely different. Why? Because, it, thanks God, we have an edge in trading. Why? Because the market is inefficient. And because the market is inefficient, we can find those inefficiencies, such as, for example, a pullback pattern. A pullback is gonna be a pullback in 10 years, in 100 years, in 1,000 years. It's gonna be a successful pattern if you know how to trade it, okay? That's a successful statistical pattern. Okay, it depends very much on the nuance how you trade it. But those patterns exist because we are not trading always against zero. So trading is not statistically like the casino at all. And I, I found a name for it, or, or I call it the law of dependence. The law of dependence. What is it? The law of dependence is this. Well, I don't know if I have pounds or euros here because we came from Madrid today and we're flying back tonight. So whatever, I got Juan Carlos here, right? Okay, so I throw this up. What's the chances I get one or the other? What's the chances on the first throw? Please tell me. 50. What's the chances on the second throw? 50 still. The first throw and the second throw are independent from each other. There is no absolutely casually connect, casual connection between the first event and the second event. There is the law of independence in the casino. Unless the roulette is broken, the first throw doesn't affect the second throw. In trading, yes. If I have three candles going, going up, believe me, I have a higher chance that the fourth candle goes up. It gets affected by the candles before. Hence, we have the law of dependence. Because we have the law of dependence, it has nothing to do with random throwing. And we can throw all these models like the Kelly ratio and stuff like this into the garbage bin because trades are dependent on each other. If I have a trading system that has had three good trades, chances are the fourth good trade is gonna be good. And if you have a system that is in a losing streak Chances are the next one is gonna be a loser, more than 50%. And once we got that, we can create trading systems. Law of dependence. Casino, law of independence. Nothing to do with each other. Please don't compare, it even annoys me. Next thing. That's, that's one more technical one I said, I'm gonna deal with a couple of technicalities. People say, well, if you do a trading system which is over complex, it's not gonna make you money. And here, this gentleman, we are talking about Pop Turbo, I uh, happen to see into the code, 74 parameters, believe me, it made good money. And you would say, with 74 parameters? Well, it did, what shall I do? The books say you shouldn't have more than five, six, seven parameters. We call it degrees of freedom, right? It's like, for example, let's say, I don't want to put charts, I have only, 40 minutes. Let's say we're trading a Bollinger Band. I hope everybody, everybody knows what a Bollinger Band is. Please tell me. Everybody knows what an RSI is, RSI. Okay, just plain system, stupid system. Bollinger Band, we break over the band, we sell, we break below the band, we buy. We confirm with the RSI oscillator above 70 and below 30 or 80 and 20, I don't care. Okay, how many parameters? Bollinger bar period, right? Deviation is two, but we could put deviation three, deviation 2.2, .2, two parameters, 
a reside period, a reside by level, a reside cell level, five parameters. Believe me, systems with five parameters make no money. They don't make money. I cannot make money in Forex, which is a complex market, with just two indicators. I'm sorry, with just two things. What I found out is we need systems that have a certain complexity, and that goes completely against the book, which is Robert Pardo, the revival, and I disagree fully with this point in this book. It may have worked in the 80s in the stock market to do very simple systems. Today, Turbo is working and has 74 parameters. So it's something in the middle term, something like 15, 12 parameters, as the slide says below, would work very well. Don't do two simple systems. They won't make you any money. And this is the last one. Uh, the slides are a bit old because this is, oops, oh I, my goodness, it's alive. <laughs> okay, that was a black swan. <laughs> you see, they happen all the time. So the thing is that people say, okay, trading, automated trading systems don't work forever. And I wonder, it's always a criticism that comes from manual traders. And I say, listen, and your manual trading system works forever? No, I tweak it, then it's not the same. Well, yeah, I evolve it with the market. Great. It's, so you have 10 systems over 10 years. And you're meaning I should have one over 10 years? So I just simply make it very simple. I went to my fixed book. I took just some screenshots. And the smallest one is two years. There is no parameter change. I just delete some stuff. Sorry, they're in Spanish. And that's three years, two years. That's a breakout system. That's an another breakout. This is a pullback system. And I took like five or six of them. And this is a scalper, 24 hours on the euro dollar, pullback scalper. So the thing is that it's not true. There, it's a minority. It's only three to 5% of my trading systems. But I've showed you slides audited over three, four years. One trading system can last very long. I think if you have a trading system that lasts four years, the tweaking it's excellent it's going to be only three to five percent of the times but it's the same in manual trading don't lie to yourself the, the market is changing so much lately i would say even, even every three months what was traded three months ago is not serving anymore today why because there is so much liquidity the central banks are pumping like crazy all over the place name china japan europe the uk usa whatever it's the so much money in the market, and it's so perverted, right? That the price doesn't move in a regular way. So you need to be prepared in the modern markets to change constantly, to have new systems. And majority of the systems will last six months, if you're lucky, nine months today. If you find a system that lasts three, four years, you're very lucky, okay? Okay, that's, for, that's, that's it, actually. I finished maybe a little bit earlier. You're invited to come on the 12th of March, right? If you happen to already know a little bit about robots and stuff, I'm giving out two free EAs uh, for the people that open an account with Axie Trader, which is our sponsor. And uh, you can come to a course which I will be delivering the day before. Uh, I'm gonna give a free course additionally to those that open the account and fund it with Axie. So the guys are down here. If you want to talk with them, okay, you can go ahead and open the account in the next week or whatever, it doesn't need to be today, okay? And otherwise, we can meet for a full day of automated trading. The morning, I know it's starting very early for a Saturday, we put eight o'clock <laughs> because we deliver 11 hours of le lecturing. The morning is all about risk management and trading systems. We need first to define exactly what is a trading system. Many people are lost. Many people confuse a system with a strategy. It's not the same. You need to have a very precise definition. And I'm gonna give you out a full trading system for free, manual trading system. And then two free years if you fund the account. But I'm gonna give you freebies there. I don't do much sales pitches. You see just only the last minute. to we'll talk about a free course additionally. You have our brochures. If, there's, if there is some question, I would love to hear some question about the six myths. You need to get them out of your head, really, because they harm you. They harm you. If you have your eyes on the broker, 
if you think you can become a millionaire with 10 grand and all this stuff, it's going to harm you big time. Get this out of your head. Get real. Start learning. And you need capital if you want to live like this. That's the truth. And it's tough. It's not easy. Okay? So, some questions? No questions? Some comments? Something? <laughs> What I'm saying is that uh, on this lecture, that there's these six myths are harming the traders mindset because they believe these things and that makes them trade worse than they could. That's, that's the recap of it. You need to get very real in trading. If there's a lot of myths around, compound interest. The hell, I, I, if you show me an audited account into the millions, Audited, not something done in Photoshop or whatever. Great. Find it for me. I did for one and a half years. I got on herpes here, which I still have. I don't do anymore. Uh, on the 7th of May 2010, I got hit. I lost uh, 14 grand in two hours. And that was it for my manual trading. It was the day of the Greek crisis. The day after. Exactly that night, Angela Merkel was meeting the Spanish president and the Greek president and just talking with them in Brussels. It was a very tough day. Uh, you can check the charts. And I, I lost a lot of money for my account size, which was like 20 something grand. And I stopped doing manual trading. We do fully automated trading. No, because I have risk levels which are below 0.5%. That's ha that happens to my majority of people. I, I could tell you that's the truth. I'd rather tell you how I busted my account than that one. Of course, I can show you other, other good ones, right? But that one was really, we do fully automated trading and we invite you to, 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 to sneak into it, right? Come to the course, yeah, come to the course, it's for free, it's a full day. Then we have also webinars and you, you look into it. It's not that difficult. It's not easy. Manual trading is not easy either, right? You need to study a lot. You need to practice, right? But you should look into it. I mean, 90% of the stock market is done by algo trading today. You're late. You're late. What do you want, mean by a good risk management environment? I program them myself into the EAs. It's your responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? No, no, no. You set up their system. You do a very long back test, right? You set, there is videos. Uh, if you register, you'll get some videos. You know, I can show you our channel now on YouTube. You watch some videos and get the idea. You need first to start with a very long back test. We say at least, at least seven years. And if in the past it was okay, chances are, not certainty, that it's gonna be good in the future. Then you go to the demo account. Then you trade it on the demo, paper money, right? And then if it runs well, you go to the live account. First with micro lots. It's very conservative, it's a process. So you create your own lab. The good thing about automated trading, now that you ask me is, I don't have a schedule. I'm here, my robots are trading. I don't care what happened today. I didn't even watch the phone. <laughs> I have 11 servers that are trading for me. You know, you can work on the Sundays. You can work on a Saturday. You can work in the nights. If you are a manual trader, you are obliged to a schedule. You are obliged to specialize. You are doing the European session, the breakout. You need to be a sharp in front of the screen. And if you're working, how are you going to do it? Because majority of traders have a job. That was one of the reasons I said, no way. I did it for one and a half years, and that's it. It's an opinion. Somebody else is going to tell you, no, robots don't work, right? Just come to the lecture, and you need to decide for yourself what fits you, right? A working robot should be something that uh, 
it's working on at least four pairs, four different pairs with, sorry? Uh, not necessarily, it would be ideal, of course, but at least four pairs, and uh, it should have at least a good forward test of nine months in the live account. If it's four or five months, it's too short, you need to tweak too often, it takes too much work. Yeah. What? Of course, with earning profit. Yeah, sure. I, the profit is defined completely on what I call the safety net. For me, making a 3% per month, which I think is a good profit, in my view, the, yeah, for me, right, which many students, I can show you an account of my, one of my students, audited, no problem, right now. And it depends fully, really, on your risk levels. I'll, I'll bring up this example you asked, no problem. Okay, that's the, that's the course we do the day before in Access Offices. It's in 110 Cannon Street. That's only for the people who have first funded their accounts. That's on the 11th of March. And this here, one second, is the other course, which is the free course you have there. And I'm gonna show you now this account of the student. I hope I have internet here. We usually use, there's several sites, but we, we like this site because it's audited, right? So the accounts are, are checked, they are verified. So this is one group of students of mine. And what matters is not how much they earned, but how they earned it. You will see it now. And I don't like the last part of the curve, but it's honest, right? They paid their, it's a real account. They paid their education with, with the trading completely. So they made a 61% over April, it's 10 months, right? They are now in the drawdown, okay? But the main thing is they're risking only out of 5,000 deposit they have. I can go up and show you the deposit. That's the average risk. That's a zero dot, uh, zero dot, 8% per trade. They're risking only 16 euros per trade. And they made 60%. This is what matters, this is what they teach actually, and it's very, very conservative. With a profit factor of 1.37, right? They made 3,000 pips over 1,720 trades. It's not by chance, not one trade or two trades. You can check it at home, it's open. This Nick, yes? That's one example of what a student can do. I'm not saying everybody's gonna do a 3% per month. This is much more than 3% per month. I'm not stating this. everybody does this. As a matter of fact, one of them lives in London now and works for a bank. He's a coder and he moved over to London. So he's very brilliant, this student. Okay, I'm not stating anything. This is one example of an audited account of ex-students, okay? But the main thing is this. The risk is hilariously low. So I don't care if you make a 2%, a 5%, a 10%. I want to know how much you risk per trade on average. How much you risk per trade on maximum? That is a 2% because he has a 5,000 euro deposit and his maximum losing trade is 100 euros. That's a 2%. So he makes on the average 0 0.08, sorry, 0 0.08 risk on the average and on the maximum at 2%. You understand? That's the worst that happened over these 1,700 trades. And then we check the drawdown, we check the losing streak, and we analyze everything. And that's very brilliant, and it's not automated. Right? That's the thing. A lot. This is a lot of strategies, because look, he, the trick is the portfolio. He, he's not trading one thing. He's trading, I say you need to trade at least one team of 11 players, okay? and you need to compose them together. Look what he's trading. He's trading all kinds of things, right? You need to find a good broker, you can do that. Because you cannot trade Swiss Yen on every broker, which I love for scalping, right? That would be very expensive on some brokers. Or Pound Canadian, also expensive on some brokers. You have a portfolio on the same account, yeah. So two trades on scalping and, and three trades? Everything together. We have a, we have a team. You are the coach. The goalkeeper is the trend system. You see that? Why? 
because they shoot very badly and you never know where it exits, like a trend system. You never know where the exit ends up, right? In a trend system. The defense is the breakout. They're tough and shoot fast, right? Two or three of them. The midfielders are the range systems, counter trend systems, right? And the, the strikers are the scalpers. This is a more, a more scalpy basket because if you go down, he's on average very little time in the market. This is what we teach actually. This, I'm analyzing this account right now. I didn't plan this actually. I'm over time. So three hours, 42 on average. That's very low, that's scalpy. But he has systems which are three days in the market, trend systems. The combination makes you strong, right? That's, that's, it's two layers above the usual manual trading. Do you see that? The usual manual trading, the guy would be just doing trend systems, would be in front of the screen. He would be a slave of the screen. I said, you, you change your slavery for, in the job for your, your, your slavery uh, as, a, as a soft trader. It's both, both are slavery. You see that? Okay, so I, I invite you to check into this. It's not for everybody. Because you need to tweak the systems, you need to know about, about numbers. When it tells you this is 2%, whatever, you shouldn't be lost. You can learn it. You follow? And if you like a little bit this technical side, then maybe this is for you. You can still do manual trading. I, I did it for one and a half years. I was doing my manual and my automated trading, and definitely my automated trading was better than my manual trading. I know good manual traders, it's not my case. Okay, so last question, and we, we close because I think we're over time. What, yeah. What stops the road with fake indication of price in Germany? It's, look, that's a very good question because uh, on the 15th of January, I have a risk level of below 0.5%. On the 15th of January 2016, if you were on the Swiss franc, what happened? Bad luck, depending on whether you are long or short, right? Right, yes. Okay, so as we take very low risk, 0 0.5, imagine there happens a really bad event, a black swan, like the Swiss National Bank is gonna make some dirty games on you, right? You lose 10 times what you planned to worry about your stop loss. 0 0.5 times 10 times is 5%. That's the hit I got. It didn't kill me. People who are trading at 3%, they lost their account. That's the answer. It's all about risk management. No matter how bad it gets, it's all about risk management. You see? I didn't earn that day. I was in the wrong direction. But it didn't kill my account. Okay, so we close in here. Thanks for coming. You have the invitations there. If somebody wants to fill out the forms, we'll invite you to webinars and stuff. It's not obligatory. Give them to Olga. And if you want to talk with the guys there, Ross and Paolo, the guys down there, you can also talk with them about the account. That's it for now. Great. Thanks for coming. Thanks. <laughs>